The church is dead, the church is irrelevant, and Christians should just disappear. I've heard these comments from different people over the years. People's trying to sort of make sense of what's the future like for Christians? What's the future like for the church? Today we celebrate the birth of the church. And the solemnity of Pentecost, I think, helps us to remind us what the Christian community is meant to be about. Sometimes I've heard people say to me, well, I've got my own faith, I believe in, believe in God, but I sort of don't feel like I, I need to come to church. I sort of don't feel like I need to pray on a, a regular basis. You've probably heard people say this. You might have felt this way at times yourself. One of the very interesting things on the day of Pentecost and each of the moments where the Holy Spirit's received, it's not just received for one person. It's about people gathering together. After the ascension, which we celebrated last week, for nine days, the apostles, the disciples gathered in Jerusalem. Mary was there bringing them all together. They were, bringing, they were brought together in prayer. And I've sort of imagined a little bit what it was like. We know after the resurrection, Jesus was crucified. And then literally hours after the moment of the resurrection, Mary Magdalene's gone to the tomb. She's experienced the risen Lord. And several of the, of the disciples say, we're not going to believe. We're just getting on with our lives. And they leave the community. And we know that they go on this journey to Emmaus. We know the story. We reflected about this during Easter. But what happens on Pentecost is that the community was gathered, which must have been quite an effort for Mary and others to keep everybody together. I know in my own family, after two or three days of everyone being together, you get sort of petty arguments that start to develop. This probably happens in a lot of families. I, I would imagine this was starting to happen in Jerusalem. They were all in a little room for several days together. You were probably getting some of, some of that joy, but you are probably getting some, we're all too close together and we just need to get out. But there was something about them gathering. And as Christians, we need to gather on a regular basis. And that's not just meant to happen virtually. Yes, we had to do this with virtually, and some people are still doing this in other parts of the world now. But we are very free, we are very able, and it's pretty safe for us to be able to come to Mass on a Sunday morning, as you have done those in person here this morning. One of the sad things, I think, is that I've talked to a number of people, both young and elderly, who've said, I don't really need to be part of the community anymore. The Holy Spirit comes in a community. And a big element of what it means to, a, to be a Christian is not to be anonymous. It's not to be sort of, no one knows who I am, I just do my own little thing. That's not what a community is. That's not a family. And sometimes what can happen as a Christian community, especially in a Catholic context, is that sometimes when we have so many people at church, is that sometimes we can arrive and leave and no one will have recognised who we are. To a certain extent, I think one of the beautiful things of COVID is that we're required to have everybody signed in when we come in. And so we have people at the door who are welcoming people. Yes, we've got to do the QR code and all that sort of stuff, but we're interacting with other human beings. And that's first and foremost part of what it means to be a Christian community. The day of Pentecost, everybody knew everybody in the room. They were praying together. They were asking for the Holy Spirit to come into them together. And that's, I think, one of the great hallmarks of being a Christian community. But I think the, the challenge of COVID has meant that many elderly have felt it's a little dangerous to come out. And then in time, people have thought, oh, well, I'll just do it by myself at home. Unfortunately, many young families have said to me, well, why do I need a church? I'll just, I can pray to God directly at home. And yes, we can pray to God directly at home, but the Christian community also prayed together that we are a family. And so Pentecost reminds us we are a church, we are a family. We don't just do this alone, we do this together. And the Holy Spirit comes into us, into us individually, 
when we're together. So there is this paradox. We have the Holy Spirit coming individually, but it comes when we are together. Then the Holy Spirit comes in the context of prayer, and then they go out. And interestingly, there wasn't someone like Peter or or James or John on the side who was signing people onto employment contracts. Everybody went out to proclaim the good news. Those who had great knowledge, those who didn't have great knowledge, those who had great skills, and those perhaps who had mixed sort of skills, each and every one of them went out with the Holy Spirit with them to proclaim Jesus in the world. What's happened in Australia which I think is in one sense a good thing, but I think another thing is a challenge, is that the church in Australia is the biggest non-government employer. We employ more people in the Catholic Church than both territories and several states right across the country. The church employs people in our schools, in our hospitals, in our nursing homes, in our social welfare, in our outreach. But having a job doesn't necessarily mean that you're there because you've committed with faith. It doesn't necessarily mean that the Holy Spirit's within you and that you actually see your work as a service and part of the mission of God. It just becomes a job. I've talked to some priests about where the the future of the church is going. And some people think, well, the future of the church is if if we want to have strong parishes, we'll just employ more people. But the challenge of that is that you are not, we don't focus on the Holy Spirit coming into each person. All of us are called to be disciples. All of us have the Holy Spirit in us, and we are missionaries, each and every one of us. And we can't just employ more people and expect that things are going to get better. Things will get better when we call the Holy Spirit down into us, and each and every one of us go out into the world. Sometimes they say that the the most important words after the words of the consecration in Mass are the final words, that we are called to go in peace. We're called to bring the peace of Christ into the world. We're sent. And this is what happens on the day of Pentecost. They gather as a community, they pray together, the Holy Spirit comes into each and every one of them, And each with their own brokenness, each with their own gifts, but also their own failings, they go into the world to proclaim Jesus Christ as our God, as our Lord. So all of us are called to do this. Don't just expect that it's my job or other people's jobs who who might be employed by the church. All of us are called to do this. There was no sort of concept of a professionalization amongst the early Christians. This was the one thing the early Christians actually spoke against. There was a problem they saw with the Pharisees and the the scribes and the professional priests that this undermined all of the people. Every Christian is called to go into the world and proclaim the good news. So I want you to, during the Mass today, to pray for the Holy Spirit to come into you and to everybody here in the church. Let us discern and ask God to help us understand the gifts that we have received and then the opportunities that we have to bring Jesus to our world. The church will be dead if people don't go and proclaim the good news. All of us have that responsibility, from the very young to the very old, to proclaim Jesus. We know some families find, why why, why be part of a church? I don't need to come to church. Some people say to me, why why do we need to come to pray? I can meditate at home. Why come to church to hear a priest talk about things? I can read read a self-help book or or listen to some self-help video. All of us are called to proclaim the good news. It's one of the qualities of being a Christian. And this is what we celebrate at Pentecost. Throughout the Easter season, we've reflected, we've journeyed with Jesus... And now we come to this moment of Pentecost, the birth of the church.